If you've ever marveled at stunning images of galaxies and nebulae in astronomy books, chances are those photos were taken by the Hubble Space Telescope. Hubble has given us incredible insights into the cosmos, but in 2022, its successor, the James Webb Space Telescope, or JWST, took center stage instead. James Webb isn't just a bigger, better version of Hubble. It's a completely different kind of telescope designed to capture infrared light, which allows us to see galaxies billions of light years away. Some galaxies would not be visible otherwise because their light has redshifted beyond the visible light spectrum due to the universe's expansion. The JWST has already begun to reshape our understanding of the universe. From discovering the oldest galaxies to analyzing the atmospheres of exoplanets, it's pushing the boundaries of our knowledge in ways we never imagined. But in my opinion, there's a lot of misinformation being peddled about its discoveries, including some ridiculous clickbaity headlines. In this video, I'll be highlighting a few of the most significant discoveries and what it means for standard cosmology. And I'll give you the straight scoop without the hyperbole. If you're as excited as I am about the JWST, stay tuned because that's coming up right now. Now, Hubble's taken a lot of nice pictures, but these pictures are taken between the near-infrared and ultraviolet range. So much of this range is in the visible spectrum. Now, this is very useful if you want to take pictures in the colors we're used to, but here's the problem. You can have a galaxy that looks nice and fancy if it's relatively close to us, because then it would send much of its valuable information in visible light. But if you consider a similar galaxy that's relatively far away on the order of billions of light years, then it would look completely different to the human eye. Not because it would be different physically, but because the light it sends out would have been stretched below the visible range. This is called redshifting. As space-time stretches, it makes the wavelength of light traveling in it longer and longer. And for light from very distant galaxies, this redshift results in us receiving light below the infrared range. And this is one of the reasons why the James Webb Space Telescope is not only a bigger and better telescope than Hubble, but also better for viewing the most distant objects because much of its optics is specifically designed to capture infrared pictures. This is also why in many pictures from the JWST, colors are artificially added in post-production so that we can see it. The original photo, if shown, would not be visible to us. So, did the James Webb Telescope succeed in its mission? Well, you can argue that it actually did too good of a job. What do I mean by this? After the telescope came online, physicists needed to analyze the first images to explore the new capabilities of the telescope. This led to a chaotic race, as one scientist after another claimed to have discovered the oldest galaxy. While this was indeed the point, spending billions on the telescope in the first place, the problem is that now that the race is beginning to slow down and we've had time to more carefully study the results, it is seemingly increasingly apparent that either we are calculating wrong or that there is something wrong with our understanding of the universe. Our model of the universe, also called the Lambda CDM model, makes some predictions about how the universe should have evolved since the Big Bang. About 300,000 years after the Big Bang, the universe was mostly made up of hydrogen gas. Thanks to small quantum fluctuations, this gas was not completely uniformly distributed. The underlying structure of dark matter, along with gravity, began to pull the gas together wherever the densities were slightly higher than the rest of the gas. These are called overdensities. At some point, around 200 million years after the Big Bang, local concentrations of hydrogen gas became so dense and hot that they ignited into the first stars. Then, more stars formed and we got larger structures like galaxies composed of millions and billions of stars. Later, we got even larger structures like galaxy clusters and then superclusters and so on. The bottom line is, that the structure of the universe formed over time to create areas with concentrations of stuff and consequently also leaving areas empty of stuff. This is the structural evolution of the universe, starting with the sea of hydrogen and leading to large structures of galaxies. The problem is that according to our model, it would take a certain minimum amount of time for big bright galaxies to form because it involves a hierarchical process of small clouds of gas that condense over time, then stars coming together to form nascent galaxies. Brightness is an indication of the number of stars or mass that a galaxy contains. 
What the James Webb Telescope discovered is something that seemingly shouldn't exist. Case in point, the Jadis GS Z14-0, the most distant galaxy ever discovered, so far, is remarkably bright. But according to our calculations, it existed less than 300 million years after the Big Bang. Now, we're still double-checking our results, but so far, this discovery doesn't seem to fit with our current model of the universe. Could it be that something is fundamentally amiss in our understanding of cosmology? More specifically, is the Big Bang model broken? The answer is likely not so dramatic. And by the way, sensational headlines stating that the Big Bang never happened or is disproven are simply wrong. The big quote-unquote discovery is simply that the early galaxies seem a little more evolved than expected. It's an intriguing astrophysical puzzle that doesn't fit current models of galaxy growth. But this is actually a good thing because it will help guide us to a new and better understanding of the universe and a more complete Lambda CDM model. Several studies are already being discussed and worked on in the physics community which may be able to reconcile these new findings into a new and improved model of the universe. For example, one way out of the problem with early forming galaxies could be that we simply don't understand dark matter correctly. Since we expect dark matter to form the backbone of a galaxy, our expectations are based on how we believe dark matter behaves. But if dark matter had some unexpected properties, that would change our predictions. To this day, no dark matter particles have ever been detected, so we're still very much in the dark about what dark matter really is and can only estimate how it might behave. Alternatively, there are models involving dark energy which speculate that some new early dark energy field in the early universe could have existed that would then have altered the mechanics of the early universe enough to explain the early galaxy formation. Other theories suspect that so-called population three stars which are supermassive stars virtually without any metal content could have existed in the very early universe. Since such stars would burn quickly and have very short lifespans that end in a supernova explosion and formation of early black holes, this would effectively speed up the evolution of galaxies. This is exactly what you would need to create a more evolved universe early. There are other theories as well that could resolve this conundrum, but none of them are exactly physics shattering just minor adjustments to the Lambda CDM model. Now, speaking of other theories, I want to tell you about a great new app I've been using called Listening.com, who've generously agreed to sponsor this video. Listening.com turns academic papers that I often need to read when doing the background research on videos like this into audio so that I can listen to them on the go. I often find that listening to a paper while also reading it helps me comprehend it better, so saves me time. Listening works not just for papers, but can also turn textbooks, PDFs, websites, and even emails into audio. You can listen while you drive, work out, or multitask. I think it's the best app for academic materials for a couple of great reasons. Believe it or not, it can read math equations, automatically skip citations and footnotes, and can pronounce difficult technical words. On top of that, it automatically detects chapters and you can select from a list of voices. If you read as much as I do, I think you'll see a real benefit. In fact, you can try the app absolutely free, and if you use my link, you'll get an additional week free. So be sure to click the special link in the description. Now back to the biggest discoveries made by JWST. Now, it turns out that the Webb Telescope can also help us understand the evolution of a supernova in a very unique way. It has managed to take a picture where the same supernova can be seen at three different points in time. This might seem like magic, but it's done using a concept Einstein himself predicted a century ago, gravitational lensing. This feature is not unique to the JWST, but because of its modern optics and ability to see distant objects, it's very powerful. So what's going on? Well, as with most any camera, you can use optics to zoom in and focus on whatever you want to capture. On a camera, this is accomplished with one or more lenses. The Webb Telescope, besides having lenses, has another trick up its sleeve. It can use massive galactic objects as a source of external optics to take pictures that would otherwise be impossible to take. This is due to the gravitational lensing, which occurs when a massive celestial body causes a sufficient curvature of space-time to bend the path of light traveling past or through it. This bending of light acts like a vast lens. An example of how this works is the supernova ET 
2022 RIV, located about 9 billion light years away. It's sending out light spherically outward from where it's located. These light waves would just keep going straight if the universe were empty, and if that were the case, we would see a single picture of the supernova at a moment in time 9 billion years ago. But the universe is full of massive objects between this supernova and us that can bend the light. And it turns out that the matter between us and the supernova is aligned in such a way that its light gets to us via three different paths. This is because a galaxy cluster called RX J2129, located 3.2 billion light years away, lies directly in the path. And because mass in this galaxy cluster is distributed unevenly, rays of light emitted by the supernova are bent in different amounts. And so they take longer or shorter paths to us, resulting in separate images. The light that took the longest path gives us the oldest image of the galaxy, in which the supernova is still visible. The next image is of the galaxy as it appears roughly 320 days later than the first one. And the last image is a full 1,000 days after the first. So in one picture taken by the JWST near-infrared camera, we can see the evolution of the same supernova explosion. Now the supernova has already faded from view in the two latter pictures, so it didn't really give us a lot of new information, but it shows the power of the telescope and how we can use gravitational lensing to zoom into a single object in the universe and potentially view them multiple different moments in time. This in principle could be extremely powerful. Something else that the JWST is really good at is identifying and analyzing exoplanets, including their chemical composition. And not only that, it's so powerful that it has even managed to take direct pictures of several exoplanets, but that's another story. What's most powerful is the way it can determine the chemical content of the exoplanet. The way it does this is really interesting. First, we can use the knowledge we already have on Earth to study things outside of Earth. One of the main concepts in physics is that the rules of chemistry and physics is presumed to be the same everywhere in the universe. Obviously, the conditions on various exoplanets will be different, but the basic laws of physics and chemistry will be the same. There's no reason to think otherwise. So we can study chemicals here, learn their properties, and use that information to scout for these same chemicals elsewhere in the universe. In particular, we're interested in light absorption. So we can study a star and record its light spectrum. That is, how much blue light, green, red, etc. the star emits. If an exoplanet is orbiting this star such that, from our vantage point, it goes in front of the star, then that exoplanet will block out some starlight and cause a dip in its luminosity. We can detect this, and this is a common method of detecting exoplanets. The trick now is that if the exoplanet has an atmosphere, then some of the light from the star will pass through that atmosphere. The light that passes through the atmosphere, because it interacts with the chemicals in it, can give us a lot of information about that atmosphere's chemical composition. So by analyzing the light coming from the star and then subtracting the light that passed through the atmosphere, we can get a signature of what was absorbed and match that with known chemicals. This kind of analysis has already shown, for example, the abundance of methane and carbon dioxide on an exoplanet called K2-18b, located 120 light years away from us in the habitable zone of its star. This was the first time carbon-based molecules had been found in an exoplanet that is in the habitable zone of its star. Its composition supports the idea that there may be a water ocean underneath a hydrogen-rich atmosphere on it. Interestingly, the initial web observations also detected a molecule called dimethyl sulfide, DMS. On Earth, this is only produced by life. The bulk of the DMS in Earth's atmosphere is emitted from phytoplankton in marine environments. So this is very interesting because it indicates that there may be life on the planet. But it's also possible that it's produced naturally. We don't know yet. And this is a result from just a single exoplanet. But other studies on other exoplanets have also found different chemicals, which look interesting. In my opinion, it's only a matter of time until Webb detects compelling evidence for life on another planet. No doubt there will be a lot more amazing discoveries made by the JWST but these so far have been the biggest and most interesting finds. I'll see you in the next video, my friend.